Today we're at Partial Bay on Lake Sakakawea. We're gonna visit with fishery supervisor Dave Frieda and talk about the walleye spawn. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Dave, looks a little bit different here at Partial Bay compared to the last couple springs, why is that? Uh, we're about, you know, four foot lower than we have been the last few springs. Uh, obviously it's been dry winter across the plains, virtually no runoff or no runoff. And the other, the other issue we're looking at this spring is we have obviously declining water levels throughout the spawn. We're in that critical uh, April 20th, uh, May, May 15th period where, you know, the majority of our smelt, walleye reproduction, stuff like that occurs. So, so our smelt have just kind of wrapped up spawning or they've been spawning last week or two, but we've had declining water levels over that time, which is not good on the smelt spawn. Definitely they spawn in shallow water. So yeah, it's a different, it's a different year. Dave, explain the spawning process up here at Partial Bay. We set trap nets, which capture the fish that are traveling the shorelines looking for a place to spawn and they're led into the nets. And so then we collect fish out of the nets and um, we'll bring the fish back to the ramp back here and we'll separate them into the males and females and then the, the females that are ready to spawn are expelling eggs freely as, as we uh, encourage them to spawn. Um, and then the eggs are fertilized with the males, with the milk from the males. Um, after these eggs are fertilized here, we put them in coolers and they're taking back to, taken back to Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery and the Fish and Wildlife Service is responsible for raising those fish over the next oh, month and a half to two months and they'll be hatched and put in the ponds and then game and fish will come back and we take those fingerlings out of the ponds and they're stocked in 100 plus walleye lakes all across the state of North Dakota. How many eggs are we looking to, to collect this year? Oh, I think in the neighborhood of 450 quarts or maybe a few more than that and there's 120,000 eggs in a quart, so. What triggers this, the walleye spawn? Uh, two things, both temperature and photo period, or photo periods, uh, length of the daylight, uh, basically time of year. And uh, on Sakakawea and most places in general in North Dakota, the, the walleye spawn is, it's more influenced by photo period or time of year than it is water temperature, because water temperatures can swing dramatically throughout the day and, you know, from one day to the next. but. And typically, right here at Partial Bay, year in and year out, it'll vary the peak of the run a few days either way, but typically around May 1st, even if we have early springs, it's about May 1st is usually the peak of the spawn. This is where it all starts, Dave, for walleye fingerlings in North Dakota. Yeah, the majority, especially the last 10 years or so, uh, the vast majority of walleye stock throughout the state of North Dakota are originating from Lake Sakakawea. Um, Sakakawea has had a very good walleye population over the last decade, and it's been a good source of eggs. You mentioned a little bit about the hatchery, but they play a key role in all this production. Yeah, it's a partnership. Uh, we do the field work and we, we bring the eggs back. They raise the fish for the citizens in North Dakota, and we stock them back out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a good partnership. The state of North Dakota doesn't own any of our own hatcheries, so we work in cooperation with the Fish and Wildlife Service to, to ensure we meet what has been record demands for walleye fingerlings across the state over the last quite a few years. How does the uh, fishery look for walleyes? Overall, the walleye fishery is still in real good shape. Um, last year, we did see some decline in overall abundance, but we were running at the highest, the highest walleye abundance for about three consecutive years that we've ever seen. Um, it did moderate some last year, and the size structure did moderate, um, particularly in this middle portion of the reservoir, the lower portion, uh, not as much change, but overall things look pretty good. The fish look pretty good this spring. Okay, and you guys work in all different kinds of weather conditions. Yeah, this is, especially this spring, after having a very nice winter, um, we got in the water early, but then April was not kind to a fisheries worker. It was cold and miserable, a lot of it, and temperatures really cooled off, and now we now it's warming up perhaps almost too fast over the next few days here, about the time the peak spawn is coming on. But. When will the walleye fingerlings be, be stocked across the state? Um, typically by mid-June, mid some will be going out mid-June to end of, it can stretch into early July. Again, depending on, on uh, 
you know, conditions in the ponds, how fast they grow a little bit, but end of June is when the vast majority of them go out. Okay, and when we release these fingerlings into a lake, how long before they're catchable? That varies dramatically from body of water to body of water. Some of our extremely productive um, prairie lakes where they're introduced new that are very, very productive, lots of fathead minnows. Some of those fish in two years, they're, they're already harvestable size two years after they're stocked. Um, in some cases, you know, by the end of their second summer. Um, Skakawea typically a 14 inch walleye is about, you know, 14 is kind of what most people start considering what they want to harvest. Um, that's about three years, give or take. So, a lot of great information, Dave. Thank you.